Hey everyone, I'm Sammy and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be taking you along with me as I restore an all wooden cedar chest. Now this piece has been very neglected, but I'm here to fix it up and give it a new life. I hope you enjoy this restoration and let's jump into it. This is what we're starting with. It is a lane cedar chest and it is not in its best shape. It's missing a leg for starters and a lot of the veneer is quite damaged and a lot of the old finish is coming off. So this will definitely all need to be sanded down and refinished and that is my goal for this piece is to restore this wood. You'll notice on the front it looks like there was old trim but it's no longer there and hopefully those lines will come off when I sand it. My first goal for this piece is to create a new leg so I am flipping this bad boy over so I can first tighten the base because I noticed it was a little bit wobbly and we want a nice and secure base. So I went ahead and tightened all those screws and then using the existing back leg for reference I measured the length of the leg I needed to cut. For this I'm using a 2x2 pine board that I just had laying around my shop and I'm using my miter saw to get an exact measurement on this which was 7 and a quarter inches. Always remembering safety first so I'm grabbing my protective glasses and my headphones because I hate loud noises and we are good to go ahead and cut this piece. Next, I need to measure the width of these legs, so I double checked those, and then I'm bringing this piece of wood over to my table saw. I adjusted the clamp really quick to the correct measurement, and then I ran it through really quickly on both sides, and we were good to go. Now that I had my leg cut, I needed to do something about these square edges, so I grabbed my router with a roundover bit and I went over those really quickly and soon enough I had a fourth leg that looked just like the other back leg. Now it was time to attach everything. I had cut this little support triangle to give this leg a little bit more stability and now I'm just applying glue to the leg here and a little bit on the chest itself. And then I'm using my nail gun to put two nails through the back just so it's nice and secure until I can screw it in. Now I'm gluing on this little support triangle and that's exactly what this is going to do is just give this leg a little bit more to hang on to rather than just being there alone and I wanted it to match the other side. Once I had that glued on, I am going to be screwing this on. So first I'm going in with a drill bit to make a nice hole for my screw to set in and then I'm going in with a bigger drill bit here so that my screw head has something to sink into instead of sticking out. Now that we have four very secure legs, we can work on the rest of this piece. So I started off by removing all the hardware and I wanted to keep all this hardware, but sadly one of the ones in the center was missing, but I had an easy quick fix for that and I had some hardware that looked pretty similar and would do the job. But otherwise, the other ones were in really great shape, so I just set those aside for later. An interesting fact about this chest is that it has a lock on it and this one actually does have the original key with it which I thought was really cool but there's been a recall because children were getting locked inside as there's no way to unlock it from the interior and that brought up a new safety concern and a lot of unhappy customers. Moving on, we are getting right into sanding. I am going in with a 150 grit sandpaper to remove the bulk of this old finish that's coming off. Now you can see here, a lot of it has come off already, so it was really easy to run over with the sander and remove all of it. Now you might have noticed I did not do a number one step that I always do when working with furniture and that was cleaning off this piece. Honestly, sometimes I skip that step, especially on pieces like this. I know I'm going to be sanding over the whole piece and going to need it to clean it really well later on. So I just went for it and it started sanding and this old finish was coming right off. So I was having a grand old time. 
A big reason why you would want to clean your furniture before you go in and sand it is because it can remove any old gunk or grime that's going to get clogged up in your sander and that would cause you to keep switching out your sandpaper and wasting more sandpaper but I didn't feel like this was happening and I felt like it was just the old finish coming off. I continued sanding until all of that old finish was removed and luckily when I started sanding on the front everything was coming off and you no longer could see those lines where that trim was so thankful for that. Um, I continued sanding everywhere else including the legs and then I moved on to fixing any areas that needed some extra attention. a few areas where the veneer was missing so I mixed up some all-purpose Bondo and I applied that around any areas that needed it. I made sure to get enough on there where it covered the area but I still wanted a thin enough coat where I could then go ahead and apply a piece of tape over that and I like to do this because it leaves me with a nice smooth surface when I go back to sand it and it's much quicker than having something rigid and rough and it just makes the process a little bit easier. While that was drying, I went ahead and finished up the sanding work that I needed to do. I needed to finish both of the sides. Now, like I usually say, prep work is the most important and it's usually the most time consuming and this was just one of those pieces that involved a lot more sanding than others because I'm refinishing the surface and I need to remove all of that old finish. But this piece was small enough and it was super satisfying watching this old finish come off so it seemed like it went by super quick. Now that the Bondo was dry, I went ahead and I removed those pieces of tape and as you can see, it's just a lot more smooth than it would have been if I would have just left it. And now I'm going in with a 220 grit sandpaper. I like to go in with a lighter sandpaper, especially if it's a smaller area of Bondo that I filled because if it's a really coarse piece of sandpaper, sometimes it can just rip off all that Bondo and we don't want that because we don't want to have to reapply it. And then I'm just going over the rest of the piece with the same 220 grit sandpaper and this is just going to smooth the surface and prep it for when it comes time to oiling it. This is also going to remove any areas that are a little bit splotchy or there may be a little bit of swirlies from the previous sand that we did. So overall, this is just a nice finishing touch to get it ready for the oil. Now there were still some detailed areas on the legs that I still hadn't gotten to so I grabbed out my detail Ryobi sander and this thing has been a lifesaver. You know, old Sam would have just grabbed a piece of sandpaper and spent time hand sanding this entire thing but I'm trying to work smarter and not harder so this tool has been very useful when it comes to getting into any detailed areas. If you're interested, this will be linked down in the description. And then I'm just blowing everything off really quickly with my air compressor. This thing is also awesome to have on hand. And then we're going to go ahead and wipe this down really quickly just with a wet rag. I'm making sure to use a lint-free rag because wood pieces like this, the wood grain can actually really grab on to any kind of cloth particle that there is in a rag. So you want to make sure that it's a lint-free rag. Next we're going in with a Verathane gel stain in the color Mahogany and I'm using a gel stain. Number one is because it's very forgiving and I want something that's going to stick. You can see here that the legs are made of a different type of wood than the rest of the piece and I want the leg color to match everything else. So this darker wood stain is going to do the trick for us. I applied a strip of blue tape all the way around the base so that I didn't make a mess when I was applying this gel stain and got it everywhere and then I applied a thorough coat to the rest of the base. I 
I let that stain sit overnight and then I brought out my air compressor once again and gave everything a quick spray to remove the majority of that dust before I went ahead and wiped it down with a wet rag. Again, making sure you're using a lint-free one. I always love this step because getting it wet always gives you an idea of what it's going to look like once you apply the oil. On the front side here, I'm really making sure I'm getting in these tiny little grooves and getting out any dust or dirt that was left behind. And you may be wondering why I didn't sand those, but I've got a plan for those later. Now for the most exciting step, I'm applying some oil. I'm going in with a rejuvenating oil and this is going to penetrate into the wood grain. It's going to nourish it and it's going to seal it. You never want to go light with this stuff. You always want to make sure that you're giving the wood enough for it to soak up. You can always go in later with a rag and wipe off any of the excess oil. Now you don't have to use this specific oil, there are many others out there. Another really popular one is walrus oil. I know a lot of furniture flippers use that one. I have actually never tried it, but I really want to, and it's currently in my Amazon cart. But you want to make sure if this is the final step that you're doing for the wood, you want it to be a sealing product. So like I said, this oil is going to seal it for us as well. Now for those areas that I filled with the Bondo, I'm going in with a Verithane Repair Marker Kit and I've been really loving these. They are super easy to use and really buildable, so I'm starting off with a lighter color and then lightly building until I have the desired color. Now, back when I said I had a plan for that design on the front of the chest, this is it. I'm going in with my paint touch-up kit, and I'm going to be repainting those lines. It looks like they were painted before, but they're just looking a little bit dingy now, and they needed a quick update. So I just mixed up a few of these shades until I got the desired color and I'm going in with one of my fine detailed brushes and honestly this reminded me how much I actually like painting and maybe I should do that more often. So this was a fun little art project for me. Now it was time to get this inside and get the hardware reinstalled, so I am putting that lock mechanism back in and screwing it back into place. Here I'm just making sure it works properly and then I'm moving on to getting the other hardware on. Peep the Christmas tree in the background. This video was filmed during Christmas time so no I do not have my Christmas tree up still right now. So these were the other hardware pieces that I had and I just had them in my shop laying around. I had used them on another project and they actually worked perfectly and I couldn't even tell a difference between the two different metal tones. Now it was time for staging and for this one I kept it super simple and I added a few cozy pillows and blankets but honestly I feel like natural wood pieces can really just speak for themselves. Maybe it's just me because I love them so much but there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly had so much fun restoring this piece and I love it when I can bring an old wood piece of furniture back to life and I feel like that's exactly what I accomplished here. I hope you enjoyed this restoration process and leave me some comments down below of what you think of the finished product and I will see you in the next video. Bye!